Welcome back to Room 303 in Sophomore English. We continue in our study of poetry collection number 8 from poetry unit number 4, our poetic study. We're going to take a look at Alfred Lord Tennyson's The Kraken on page 745. We, we have just looked at the Victorian poet Robert Browning, and now we're going to see the Victorian poet Lord Tennyson. We're going to see Tennyson again. Put this in your notes at 3A. We're going to see Tennyson again in your senior year, just like we see Browning in your senior year. And we will study Tennyson's classic, Ulysses, uh, as well as Lady of Shalott. We will take a look at um, both of those, uh, a, a, as well as uh, Tears Idle Tears, lectured for you in the senior uh, B folder on LearnStart.net if, you, if you'd like to know more about Tennyson. Let's meet him real quickly and just remind ourselves it to be. We're concentrating on sound devices. We're going to see a lot of examples of this in this really uh, famous classic little poem. Um, Tennyson, note your dates, 1809 to 1892. In an age when poets were often celebrities, Tennyson was perhaps the most celebrated of all. Named Great Britain's Poet Laureate in 1850, which just simply means the most famous poem of England. Tennyson cut quite a figure, dressing in a dashing cape, a large brim felt hat. When not in London, he lived on the Isle of Wight in a, a large home that is now an inn. As laureate, he often wrote patriotic verse and poems drawn from history and from legend. The poem, the Kraken, of course, if you're Pirates of the Caribbean fans and that kind of thing, you know all about this famous mythic monster, sea monster, the Kraken. Let's just go ahead now and enjoy the experience of this poem, and then we'll come back to ask, how does the poem work, all right? How does it work? It's a remarkable poem. The Kraken by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath in the abysmal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep the crocken sleepeth. Faintest sunlights flee about his shadowy sides. Above him swell huge sponges of millennial growth and height. And far away into the sickly light from many a wondrous grot and secret cell, Unnumbered and enormous polypi winnow with giant arms the slumbering green. There hath he lain for ages, and will lie battening upon huge sea worms in his sleep, until the latter fire shall heat the deep. Then, once by man and angels to be seen, in roaring he shall rise, and on the surface die. All right, let's take a look now at the way this poem works. Punctuation matters, no doubt. Grammar matters for us. And again, we talk about prepositions. Everything the squirrel can do to the log, in the log, on the log, under the log, around the log. Look at the opening, look at the opening word of the poem. Notice the irony. Below the thunders of the upper deep. Notice already we're using different kinds of wording, right? Below and upper. Above him swell at line five, the prepositions. This is, of course, at level one. We can write it down. A simple poem about a sea monster. Of course, the Kraken is a Scandina Scandinavian, right, from folklore, Scandinavian folklore. A sea monster resembling kind of like a huge squid, a giant squid, which they tried to give you, by the way, in the little drawing on 745, right? There have been rumors over the many, many years, especially back when ships would put out to sea, that there were these large squid-like creatures that could come up and swallow the entire ship and pull it down. And there were sailors who survived this kind of thing that swore that's how their ship, in fact, was taken down. Now, whether it actually is true or not has always been the subject of huge debate, but notice here, Tennyson will play in the imagination. And what does he say about this mythic sea monster? Well, it lays under the water, waiting waiting, waiting, until finally it comes to the surface, last line, in roaring he shall rise and on the surface die, because he's going to obviously compete with a ship, right? Notice the beauty in line 10 of the winnow with giant arms, the slumbering green, that sleeping ocean, which can all of a sudden be awakened with the rising of the kraken. At 2A, do you have a message or a theme here? Some will point out that this is really about the war between nature 
and technology like ships. And sooner or later, you're going to have that kind of war. Jump to 3A really quickly. In the American tradition, probably the most famous example of this is Melville's Moby Dick, a story about a famous white whale that goes after Captain Ahab, the captain with only one leg, and ultimately destroys Ahab and the ship as well. Um, at 2B, as we've already said, the, the, the use of prepositions, the different kinds of beautiful sounds that are a part of this, the alliteration, the thunders, far, far, beneath, abysmal, faintest, flea, examples of assonance uh, as well here. Notice below, deep, thunders, upper. Can you hear that up? They, they use sounds, right? Beneath, sea. Dreamless, sleep, all of these examples, good, great examples of assonance. The alliteration and assonance, of course, create what, you might say? How does it work? Almost like a dream-like storytelling quality. Let's write that in 2D. Almost a dream-like storytelling quality, which is what makes this poem so much fun to read. At 3A, what is the text for you that comes to mind most? Um, for those of you that maybe ever saw the... Um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Disney film, there you have a giant squid that will attack um, a, a ship, and it's pretty horrifying if you're a young person, real ch or if you're a child looking at that, at that uh, episode. Some of you will go to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, and at the moment in the first film that they're trying to get inside of that cave, from out of the water comes this thing with all these arms that are like coming after it, which is kind of horrifying and scary as well. At 3B, for you, oh, I'm sorry, uh, one, one other question at 3A. What, do you have a video game that comes to mind that plays around with Kraken at all or plays around with some kind of big, nasty, scary monster or something like that? You know, uh, you know, and of course, the Pirates of the Caribbean do come to mind. We mentioned that one as well as a classic example, right? At 3B, what is a moment in your life when some kind of critter I'll just use that word, from nature, freaked you out, scared you. Maybe it's snakes. Uh, so I have students that say they don't go anywhere near the ocean because they're freaked out by sharks or squids or something like this. Do you have a fear of some animal in nature that you worry about could somehow attack you or hurt you? Do you have an experience where that actually happened? Have you ever been out on the ocean, and while you were on the ocean, or a large body of water, were you worried about the possibility of something coming from under the water and getting you? And can you remember you know, a time when that happened? The genius of Tennyson, like I said, will come back in your senior year to enjoy this great Victorian poet some more. Thank you.